Hi and welcome to the fifth episode of the Snakes game tutorial series. In this episode we're going to remake the sample bot which you can see over here and I will explain it step by step to you. Now how do you make a bot for the game? A bot is a regular class that implements the following interface the interface name bot. Now this interface specifies that we're going to have to implement a function, sorry, a method, choose direction, uh, which must return a direction. Now this method uh, accepts a snake, which is our own snake, the opponent snake, the size of the maze, and the coordinate of the apple. We can use this information to somehow choose in which direction we want to move and return that direction. Now the snake of course can't move backwards, so there are basically three directions in which a snake can move, but we'll get to that later. Now let's uh, create our own package. Uh, click here, uh, just right click, new package. Name this package, for example, uh, student. In this student package, create a Java class named mybot. And make sure that this bot, this class implements the bot interface. Oh wait, it tells us that something's wrong here. Let's see what is wrong. Yeah, we're, we're going to have to implement those methods. Okay. Now, this is why IntelliJ ID is so good. It, it does many things for you, so you don't have to care and bother doing it yourself. Uh, now, first, uh, what do we want to do? Uh, just to see if it actually works, let's return a random direction. Uh, for example, that would be upwards. So let's return direction up. Okay, this is a working button already. And now we can use it in our configuration. So here, instead of Jando sample bot, let's use student. Uh, my bot and let's try running the game you can see here okay I think we were moving backwards so let's just go right okay so our snake is the white snake. As you can see here, it says my bot. And it always goes right until it reaches the wall and dies. So, okay, let's do something more complicated. Maybe we could choose a random direction. Okay, that would be nice. Why not choose a random direction? So, let's create a random object and well that would be integer d equals random next int 4 or 3 and now, depending on this, let's uh, make a switch. Switch D, case 0. That would be return direction dot down. Case 1, return direction dot left. And case 2, return 
direction dot right. Since app is a backwards direction for us, well, let's just not do it. Uh, default, well, let this be the default. So let's run the game. Oh, yeah, that's right. Let's run the game. Okay, we're moving randomly. That's nice. That's something new. Yeah, of course, random can lead to us moving backwards. So this is not really a good algorithm for the snake moving. So let's do something more complicated. Now first, let's move all our directions into an array so that it would be easier for us to use them. So let's go private static final direction. Let's just call it directions equals new direction array which will have direction right, direction down, direction up, oops, sorry, direction up, and direction, which one is that? Left. Okay. Oh, we can make it more beautiful over here. Uh -huh. Now, uh, why don't we see what snake actually is? Let's go to the reference. Hey, let me see where is it. Go to uh, decoration. So, what does it have? The snake. Now, the snake. Uh, has different properties over here and we could use snake get head to get the coordinates of the head of the snakes which we are going to use well let's do it just now let's uh, create a coordinate head which will represent our snakes head Now, as we already said before, we don't want uh, our snake to try to go backwards. So let's eliminate that possibility. Uh, we already have the coordinate of the head of the snake. Now, we want the coordinate of the second element of the snake's body, which is the coordinate which we can't go towards because it's going to be backwards. Uh, now let's create a variable for that. After head, not final, equals null for now. Now let's make sure that our snake's body length is more or equals to two, because we won't be able to find the second element of the body if its size is one. Uh, let's use an iterator to get to the second element. Coordinate. Iterator equals snake. Oops, sorry, snake body. Iterator. And let's just get the next important and we'll make sure that after it is not not final is the second chord
Oh, well, let's create another variable for that. After head, after head, not final. Okay, so after head is the second coordinate of the snake. So let's create an array which will include all directions except for the direction that is the backward direction for us. So we'll call it valid moves. Because the only invalid move is the backwards direction. Array stream directions. And now we will filter that. Uh, now the filter accepts a uh, just a lambda function. So D will represent a direction. And uh, those would be, I mean, those must be inside the map, inside the maze. So those must be, oh no, that's uh, the next step here. We just want to eliminate the backwards direction. Sorry, I forgot about that. So, uh, we must make sure that the direction we're moving to is not the second element of the snake of the body, which we found just before. Add, let's sort it. I'll make an, AR, make an array out of it. That's good. Now these are the moves which exclude the backwards move. Now let's make sure that the snake stays inbound of the maze. Uh, that the snake doesn't collide with the opponent snake and that the snake doesn't collide with itself. So let's create an array of directions calling it not losing that would be the same as we did before we create a stream but now we create a stream out of valid moves so that we don't have to make all those filtering all over again and we filter the So make sure that all our moves are in bounds of the maze. Oops, maze size. And then make sure that wherever we go, it's not going to be some element of the opponent snake's body. So the opponent elements contains this move. And make sure that the same way it's not going to be our own body. So snake, which is us elements, contains had move to D. Once again, let's sort it and create an array. Oops, direction there. <clears throat> okay, so this array here includes all the directions which we are allowed to go and not lose, except maybe for the situations where there is no move when we cannot survive. So if this not losing array is, well, not actually array, yes, array uh, length is more than zero, well, then 
let's just take the first one. Does it important? We're not going to lose anyway. And otherwise, if there is no way that we can survive, if we're going to lose anyway, wherever we go, let's just choose any of the valid moves. Just why not? We're going to lose anyway. So this is the bot. Once again, let's see. Uh, this coordinate head is the coordinate of our own snake's head. Now this coordinate over here is the second, is the coordinate of the second element of our snake's body. Why we need it? Because we want to exclude the backwards direction from the list of possible directions that we can go to towards. And in order to do that, we check here in this filter, we check that if we go to some direction, we check that this direction is not the direction uh, that if we go towards that direction, we're not going to go to the coordinate which is specified in uh, this variable after head. So we're not going backwards. And after that, we are also checking that wherever we go, we are in bounds of the maze and that the opponent's snake body doesn't contain the element that corresponds to the coordinate where we would go if we follow that direction and the same way that we're not going to collide with ourselves. Now this is very simple. You can do it in any other way. This is just the uh, shortest possible way that you could do it with this code. Now, uh, okay, this looks done. Let's launch the game, see what happens. Yay, our bot is basically the same as the sample bot. Okay. Well, I guess we're done here. Thanks for listening to me and see you in the bonus section.